Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the studio and another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hal. Uh, today, we have a guest, Samir Yediv. He is the marketing director of Mondelez Kindo Vietnam. Uh, Mondelez, no stranger. They make a bunch of snack, your favorite snack products. Um, you probably have some while you're watching this or listening to this podcast right now, actually. But also Kindo. Uh, they've come together since as of 2015. Yep. Uh, they're now, by most measures, if not all measures, the biggest snacking company in the world, yeah. uh, especially in Vietnam as well. A lot of insights that we want to hear, ask uh, Samir and, and learn from him today. Um, I'll, I'll let him just kind of jump in now. Samir, welcome to the studio. Thanks. Thanks so much, Alan. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm yes. looking forward to our interaction. You know, it's only been six months in Vietnam for you. And that's when we like to catch people like you on the <laughs> show because, you know, we've had uh, guests from, on the show that have been here decades. And that's great, too. But we always like to get that fresh perspective because, you know, you've been studying the Vietnam market, I'm sure, well before you arrived. You get here, your your perspectives and insights might change based on what, what you've experienced. And, of course, you, you arrived just when essentially the borders reopened. So I uh, would love to get your, your fresh perspective on that as well. Samir, before we do that, let's just get a quick intro from you. How long have you been at Mondelez? Uh, you know, what have you been doing and, and what's your role now? Hey, thanks. Thanks. So, yeah, I'm in, uh, I mean, I'm an Indian by nationality uh, and I've been with Mondelez for more than 19 years. Mm -hmm. When I say Mondelez, of course, I started my career with Cadbury, mm -hmm. which then got took over by Kraft. And then we got split into Kraft and Mondelez. And now I'm in Mondelez Kindo. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I have traveled a bit, I would say, in terms of various organizations while yes, staying yeah. in the same organization. Mm -hmm. uh, majorly, I have been into commercial roles in sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. So almost 40% of my time has been in sales and 60% uh, of the time in brand building and with consumers. Mm -hmm. I managed uh, in my you know, past uh, uh, brands like Oreo and uh, Cadbury. Mm -hmm. And before moving to actually Vietnam, uh, I was managing Cadbury. Uh, equity and activation for India business, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest businesses for us globally when right. it comes to the chocolate category. Mm. So yeah, it has been an interesting journey. Um, I'm married and I've got two kids. Both are going to school. Okay. Welcome yeah. to Vietnam for all. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you, you asked me that, you know, I mean, how do I feel in Vietnam and when I landed? Mm. To be honest, as much as academic research you might do about mm. the country, mm -hmm. but when you land in the country, it's a, it's a completely different place. Mm. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I can say I've been lucky enough to, you know, have come to, to Vietnam because it's a very warm country, mm. very dynamic, buzzing, youthful country. Um, you know, consumers have got a lot of aspirations. I mean, generally the population wants to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what I'm liking is I would say the people and the food mm -hmm. and of course, well, fantastic cities. From, from India, which is where you relocated, you're from India, of course, too, but, um, what, what are the perspectives of your colleagues in India when you told them you're coming to Vietnam? What did they say? What were their reactions? I'm, I'm curious from an outside perspective. Very interesting question. Mm. I mean, I would say Vietnam is a quite well kept secret, mm. you know, Welcome to this secret. world. Okay, to the whole world. To the whole world. India. I mean, yeah. I don't know whether it's about uh, Vietnam not marketing that well as a country to mm. India. Off late, I think we are doing fantastically they well. They bought new flights now. Aren't yeah, I so I think recently, you know, we got now direct flights. Uh, mm from Bombay, uh, Delhi mm -hmm. and Calcutta, mm -hmm. so which is interesting, but I don't think it was there before. So yeah, I mean, people have heard a little bit about Vietnam and I think it's it's more related to the Vietnam War and you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they know much about the country. Yeah. So it was like, oh, how are you going to be there? Language, food, stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, personally, I always get excited with the unknown mm -hmm. and the and the challenges. And I love to travel. My life, my wife uh, loves to travel. So yeah, we were <laughs> okay. we hopped onto the flight, and here we are. Exactly. Samir, thank you for sharing a bit about the journey. I mean, uh, you we mentioned offline you've been at Mondelez for twenty, almost twenty years. Yeah. Um, I want to hear more about Mondelez Kindo, especially in the context of Vietnam. You know, people like us in the business community, yes, no stranger to those names, right? And and uh, you can say the same actually about consumers. But there's so many brands within that that group. Could you highlight a couple just so you know those listening in you mentioned oreo uh sure. cadbury uh what are a couple of others best sellers or most popular in vietnam yeah so i think uh, uh i think see we are the number one snacking company mm. even in vietnam mm -hmm. uh basis the data that we get mm -hmm. 
and uh, when we say mondelez kindo mm -hmm. i mean it's like a mix of a global giant mm -hmm. and a local giant mm -hmm. i mean to put it in perspective i think mondelez is a jewel in the crown of kindo mm -hmm. so the crown is really kindo mm -hmm. and we have got you know brands like solite mm -hmm. cozy mm -hmm. uh, afc uh, we are into you know uh, moon cakes mm -hmm. we are into tet in a in a big 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 way with you know kindo offerings and of course we have got global brands like oreo mm -hmm. and cadbury mm -hmm. and uh, trident and tang so it was like you know when when these two organizations joined hand or let's say you know when we acquired uh, the kindo business here it was about the understanding of kindo mm -hmm. you know regarding the consumers of the country regarding the products and the distribution and we basically wanted to also bring our i mean when i say our i mean the mondelez global brands uh, uh, to the consumer mm. so yeah it's a, it's it's a nice mix okay yeah so quite a few brand names there um i'll be eating some oreos all the time actually i always have some <laughs> in my fridge you should, you should you should definitely try a uh, oreo challenge which we are doing right now with fuel <laughs> no basketball player okay i mean he's challenging you to make a tar as tall as him okay <laughs> We'll have to do that. Look out for that, guys. <laughs> Let's talk about the the market, um, or rather, sorry, perspective of Vietnamese culture, um, especially the heritage of the Kindo brand you mentioned. What what does the Kindo brand mean to um, the average Vietnamese cu the customer? You know, I mentioned it's a household name. Yeah. Why is that? Why has it continued to prosper and uh, be important elements of like mooncakes? It's mooncake season. Uh, wh why is that? Why is such a heritage? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. So, you know, when we talk to consumers about Kindo, mm -hmm. you know, the words that come to their mind are, of course, heritage, mm -hmm. quality, uh, trust. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's also about the connections, togetherness, I mean, of family. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when when this business started, and I know Mooncakes, uh, we started selling in some time in 1999 mm -hmm. uh, in the country. You know, it was about the organization the Kindo, you know, bringing in products and trying to connect with the consumers on the two biggest occasions. One is the mooncakes, which is the, the mid-autumn uh, uh, season and the other one is the Tet. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that has caught the imagination of the consumers mm -hmm. because these are two occasions and, and leave brands. Mm -hmm. I think these are the two occasions when people come together, right. you know, they, they want to meet family, they travel around. And I think that's where Kindo found its anchor. Uh, by providing products and communicating to the consumers, you know, how you can be together in those occasions. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's what I would say that, you know, consumers think about it as a brand which is, uh, which inspires them to be close, to mm -hmm. be together, to connect more. It's a, it has a very warm and fuzzy and, and a homely feeling. Yeah. And it's been there for decades. I it's been there for long, decades. But... It's been there for decades. And mm -hmm. uh, the quality of the products. I mean, especially let's say Cozy or Solite or AFC, mm -hmm. I mean, is, is, is there for everybody to watch. So. so my next question for you, Samir, it's a bit of a left field question. Not that hard. I think you, you know <laughs> uh, how to answer this, hopefully. Um, how do you innovate on a brand that's been so entrenched in a good way uh, as a household name for so many decades? How do you continue that uh, association, that excitement? Um, innovation, keyword. How yeah. do you continue to innovate at Mandela's Kindo? For sure. I think, I think, uh, and you're asking me specifically about the products part. Yes. Because, I mean, one of the things when people talk about the word innovation, mm -hmm. you know, usually it's about products. Mm -hmm. But we as an organization look at innovation for products also, for processes also, for marketing also, mm -hmm. for every touch point. Mm -hmm. But specifically to your question on products, I think uh, globally, mm -hmm. I mean, and because we operate in more than 150 countries, so we have a lot of insights and, and data around that. I think uh, this is the most dynamic time to be in. Mm. Consumers are trying everything new. They are ready to, you know, not stick to their, you know, whatever they liked or in, in, in the past. They want to experiment. And uh, thanks to the lot of media and internet opening up, you know, the world, you know, the food shows you see, you're watching a movie and you suddenly see a, a sandwich. Mm. You know, you're, you're watching a Korean show and you talk about mm -hmm. bulgogi and, you know, you're watching something Japanese and you talk about something else. So, when it comes to innovation for us on products, what we look at, uh, at both things. One, what is right now in trend. Mm -hmm. But secondly, what is also is going to be there in the future. What is a fad? 
and what is going to stay because ultimately are you able to disclose any of those <laughs> <laughs> market intelligence no oh uh, i mean uh, high level uh, no 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 i mean yeah it, see i think i think i don't think that there are any particular i mean you go out on the street mm. and you will see in one line mm-hmm. there's a japanese restaurant there's a korean restaurant there's a chinese restaurant there's indian food which is you know picking up and of course there is you know boncha and fur selling mm-hmm. so that that automatically tells you you know mm. how the culture is evolving how consumers are evolving when it comes to food and snacking they're quite globally curious yeah yeah so mm. i mean we we sell butter cookies for example in loo mm. and you know it's it's a recipe which we developed in you know for example france mm. and people love that mm. uh, so so it's it's a mixture of lot of things mm. how we go about it is simple is that you know it should be something that which uh, which consumers like develop something which is of high quality and develop something you know i mean depending on which tier you want to play whether premium or mass or mainstream mm-hmm. give the right bundle to the to the consumer more importantly i would say uh, rather than the product it's also about the occasion mm-hmm. and sometimes we look at oh just oh, let's you know get a new biscuit or get a new bread but it's like you know what is the need of the consumer mm-hmm. for example we recently launched a brand called kindo mojo interestingly i saw the mojo cafe also next to uh, the <laughs> studio uh we launched kindo mojo and uh, it started where the consumer said that i am on the move mm-hmm. and our research also tells us that mm-hmm. regular meals are going down mm-hmm. snacking is going up mm-hmm. so people want something which is convenient and which they can have on the go okay. and which can satiate their a little bit that hunger mm. and also is tasty so they want everything well, what and is that product exactly uh, it's yeah. a it's a it's a custard filled pocket sandwich okay mm. uh and our tagline is doy doy roy mojo thoy doy doy roy mojo thoy pardon me for my vietnamese but when little bit hunger strikes is, is it a, is it like a, a dessert kind of sweet snack or is it like a lunch no or is it like, or no like it's a it's it's a small portion 23 savory grand. or no it's it's a savory a okay. as we call it okay, it's okay. a bit of a sweet and savory I see, I you see. should try it out for sure okay i will yeah <laughs> excellent well you know um product innovation okay that's that's a given it's a must um for a company to continue to stay at the top of trends and fads and all that marketing obviously the head of marketing marketing director of mondelez kindo vietnam um how do you approach innovation uh in a marketing sense. I mean there's the technical elements but um you know that's the more boring stuff. Let's talk about the the communication elements. Absolutely. How, how do you stay on top of that innovation especially in the context of Vietnam where you know it seems like everybody wants a music video. Is uh, that innovative necessarily anymore though and if it is how do you innovate on that? <laughs> um we'd we'll love to hear your comments on that. Oh approach. that's that's so fascinating and thank you for asking me that question because as a marketer and you know of course as when it goes to communication it's mm. so interesting because the landscape in Vietnam is very different mm. when it comes to entertainment the consumers here want soap operas they want music videos when it comes to advertising mm. <laughs> consumers want information really? you know mm. it's not really that entertaining mm-hmm. but i would say it's a bit of what many advertisers and marketers are presenting to the audience mm. and i think we can do something better on that front mm. i personally feel so mm-hmm. but to your point of you know innovation for example See the classic and traditional way of doing marketing or advertising would be oh have a brief and make a 30 second or 20 second or communication and put it out. Mm-hmm. I mean it it is still relevant I won't say it's not relevant uh, to create awareness but how can you bring the message the messenger and the medium together mm-hmm. and when these three things come together you know a classic can be born or, or, or let's say it could be great activation mm-hmm. what i mean is message could be a proposition messenger could be your kol or your koc as we call it today and medium could be you know for example a tv or a tiktok or a facebook or a youtube so it's not necessary that communication or advertising has to start from a creative guy in, in the office of the creative agency mm-hmm. it can start with either the messenger mm-hmm. it can either start with for example the medium mm-hmm. and uh, our approach is that let's be open mm-hmm. let's nurture the ecosystem mm-hmm. and let's you know keep partnering with them mm-hmm. because that if there is a technology unlock on a particular medium that itself could be a great marketing hook mm-hmm. so that's that's how we are approaching it okay. and we want to innovate we want to try and experiment many different things right now.
We talk about trends a lot, and um, as, as mentioned previously, and um, COVID has, for the most part, ended here and there, of course, still. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's created and somehow maintained a wave of healthier living, healthier snacking, yeah. especially. Yeah. Snacks have traditionally not been associated with healthy stuff, yeah. but the last two years, it has in a lot of ways, too. Yeah. How has that reflected in your team's thinking in Vietnam about healthy snacking? Is, is, it, is it a fad? Is it a trend? Is it something you, you got to keep wave, you know, riding because it, you, you, the numbers clearly show that there's a sustained interest? Uh, we'll love to hear your comments on that. The trend was always there. Mm. People were trying to so seek out you know, something which is more healthy. And you know the word, word healthy, not just in the healthy way, but it could be better for you also. Mm. It could be you know something which is around very functional nutrition. But I think what has happened is that COVID actually dramatically changed that game. Mm. Uh, you know, in the last three years. And I would say more than just having a healthy and a you know, snack, snack which is nutritious, consumers are moving towards what we have identified as mindfulness. Mm. So we have a concept called mindful snacking. Now, what does that mean? That basically means you're aware of what you're having, mm -hmm. firstly. Mm. Secondly, when you're having it, have it with all your senses there. Mm -hmm. Mindlessly don't eat it. Mm. And we try to promote it in many ways through our packaging. So you have to be very mindful, you know, when you're snacking. I think that has gone up quite a lot. Mm. So the things that we are looking at, consumers are becoming more conscious about what is the nutritional element. So, you know, we work with the government and I think Vietnam government is pushing a lot on, on that front. Information. Information, more. labels mm. on the pack, fortification of, for example, wheat or, you know, the ingredients that you're putting up into mm. your products. I would say that that's basic because that has to be there. So mm. majority of our brands, whether it is AFC, whether it is Cozy, whether it is Solite, they all are in that space of, you know, health and nutrition mm. with a balance of taste. Uh, and we continue to do more of that. Mm -hmm. And we are, you know, investing a lot in terms of the research mm -hmm. and development. I mean, not only at our end, but even at our supplier's end mm -hmm. in how can we provide, you know, much more nutritional uh, snacks. So you be, mentioned being more mindful. Being more mindful. You have to keep enjoying yourself, of course. Yeah, like yeah. That's, that's a principle I have yeah. as well. You never want to sacrifice anything. It's just being more understanding, um, you know, hey, it's okay to enjoy at all times, but Absolutely. you know, don't eat ten Oreos in one <laughs> sitting. You know, um, yeah, I don't eat. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's just such a simple thing. I mean, yeah. food you eat first by your eyes, mm. then you eat by your nose, exactly. then you taste it. Mm. I mean, keep your phone aside, mm. focus on that. You know, fifteen mm. twenty minutes of of eating. But you know, if you're mindlessly eating, mm. so that could be a problem. But inherently, the way snacks were being seen, mm -hmm. let's say ten years back, mm. that. I am having it because I skipped my meal mm. and that's why I was feeling guilty and that's where somewhere you know the consumers were touting snacks to be unhealthy or bad. But today, I mean our research tells us that 62% of consumers are replacing at least one of their meals in the day with a snack. Mm. So now it's not about feeling guilty of skipping that mm -hmm. but it is more to us to provide the right snack mm. and that's also our mission, the right snack for the right moment, made the right way. Mm. That's what Mondelez believes in. Oh, okay, excellent. And you know, those 62% number you mentioned, and even aside from that number, the consumers in Vietnam, obviously it's it's massive, yeah. here, especially young people. Yeah. Uh, for example, do you know this term called Henry's? Have you ever heard of that term? Henry's. You never heard of this term? And so it, it stands for high earning, oh. not rich yet. Oh, high earning, not rich yet. And also potential Henry's. So they're ah. between the age of 16 to 24, let's oh. say, right? So this potential Henry's audience. So I see that. I see the surprise. You're, oh, cool. No, no, no. Maybe. I'm not surprised. <laughs> or not surprised, but like, oh, that's a there's new a, way of categorizing a, there is There is another uh, another term for that, you know. Okay. Uh, which which is, we use sinks and dinks. Sinks and dinks? Which is single income, no kids. Oh, Double okay, income, okay. Single, no kids. Okay, okay, yeah, Basically, yeah. it means the same thing. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. No, yeah, okay, yeah. Which means I'm earning. Yes, but you know, but you're not having to spend on like a baby or something or yeah. a house or whatever. I mean, it's a new way of thinking <laughs> exactly. or about family and all that. Yeah. But yeah, the, the Henrys and, and the one you just, oh, so, can you say it again one more time? Single. Single income, no kids. Single income, no kids. Okay, okay. Single Double income, income Sing, no okay, kids. Okay, okay, got it. Basically, uh, there's, a, there's a trend which is happening you know, uh -huh. in many developed worlds and in a lot of emerging of markets. Course. 
they don't have five babies anymore. They don't they have, have five babies. <laughs> Sometimes they don't even have or a baby yeah, because yeah. so it's like you're earning both mm-hmm. of you earning and you know. You, okay. You don't have. That's a great way to put it. Okay. So <laughs> sinks and Henrys. Um, <laughs> anyways, I bring it Henrys too because potential ones between the age of sixteen and twenty-four. The national exam was taken two months ago. Yeah. National exit exam for mm-hmm. high school students, mm-hmm. and one I think it was like one point one million took the national exam. So basically, there's 1.1 million new, like 18 year olds, basically in Vietnam every year, forecasted for the next few years. And of that, a large number of them, these are just signals that I pulled out. Uh, if something like 90% took the English proficiency component of that exam, and that is by far the largest percentage of any year before mm-hmm. before that, but also even at a regional level. What does that mean for, you know, and you mentioned information is becoming so much more important. And it's great to see these signals of young people having just indicators. English language is one thing, but um, the performance on their exams is higher and higher and higher. How do you guys think about communicating to this audience? Are they, are they yeah, they still love their music videos and TikTok videos, but how, how, how do they think about information, these, these sinks and, and Henrys? See, I, I think in this question, there are many questions. Mm. So let me try and tackle it one by one. See, firstly, I'll talk about the population. Of mm-hmm. course, the average median age in Vietnam is 32, mm-hmm. 31.7. So it's a young country. Interestingly, and I am amazed and my congratulations to the country. I've never seen such equality when it comes to gender everywhere that I've traveled, which also means that a lot of women are in workforce, which traditionally you would say oh, women is are going to be at home and cooking. But no, they are at work. Uh, you know, it's a young population on the move. So mm-hmm. snacking is automatically going up mm-hmm. because of that reason. Mm-hmm. The second point you spoke about uh, the, the Henry's and, and of course the Nings, you know, and they are on, uh, out there. You know, again, the what I'm seeing is that people or the consumers are having this dual phenomena. I want to be global, but I want to be rooted into local. In majority of the economies and big markets, there's a rise of both. Which basically means, yes, I want to know what's happening across the world and internet is opening up that, you know. I want to understand politics, I want to understand drama, theatre, you know, music, everything. And hence the language comes into play. Mm. That's why I see more and more people, you know, today in my, in my team there are 24 people in marketing. There is no problem at all anybody speaking in English mm. as fluently as I mean, as I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there is this thing that we are rooted into the Vietnam culture. You know, we still, you know, family values, uh, our traditions, um, you know, the way we celebrate our festivals, the way we want to enjoy that food, that's not going anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's the rise of both things. Um, the third part, point, you know, you, you mentioned about that, how do you like tackle to these, you know, and this, this music videos and TikToks <laughs> and stuff like that. Today's generation is the smartest that I have seen. Mm-hmm. Very smart and very intelligent. I spoke to you about mindfulness. The second thing I would want to speak to you is meaningfulness. Mm-hmm. See, they are very clear what is meaningful and what is entertainment. So there is this time for entertainment, entertain, move ahead. But in the long term, if brands or companies, or I would say even we as people, are not going to be meaningful, are not going to add value you know, to each other or to this environment or to the community in a meaningful way, we are not going to be there in their memories. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that today's consumer, while, I mean, they they are more conscious about climate, they are more conscious about food wastage, they are more conscious about, you know, their own rights, Mm. I would say. Mm. Uh, They're more conscious about diversity, independence of thought. So brands, if they are going to do only entertainment, they are going to fail. Mm. Entertainment could be a medium, but entertainment cannot be the message. Mm -hmm. So the brands which will continue to stay with the consumers or talk to them in a much more meaningful way, they will stay with the brand for the longer time. Well, I would say you guys have that, you have the mantle yeah. Uh, in the sense, you know, bring together, come together, etc. It, it's been a household like yeah. um, synergy for for a very long time. I think the mindfulness thing is is particularly st- very strong when combined with that, and uh, that's definitely innovative. I haven't I haven't heard of that. 
I mean, uh, the articulated that way. you're saying or the mindfulness? Well, both, when both. combined. Yeah, both um, when combined. Yeah. Um, we recently did a campaign on Cozy, mm-hmm. uh, I think two months back. Mm-hmm. And that's the time when the country was opening up, you know, back in the March. And we call it Liven Up Campaign. Mm-hmm. And we just put some compliments on the pack. Come on. Lam tot lam. It's gratefulness or something. Yeah. Exactly. That campaign did so well mm-hmm. as compared to if I would have given a 15%, 20% extra. Now, not to say that pricing and value at some point, point is not important. But if a pack could be just a simple message of saying thank you to someone mm-hmm. or be courteous or mm-hmm. you know give a compliment mm-hmm. in this world when you know everything is so transient and so selfish if I may say. You know, a brand stands for it. They, they resonated it beautifully to it. And uh, yeah, it was an experiment which we are happy, which, which worked for us. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. I think uh, all these new campaigns and projects, especially you having just arrived a, a few months ago, uh, what does that mean for the team and makeup of Mondelez Kendo moving forward? You mentioned you have 24 teammates. Yeah. I always like to ask, sorry, uh, towards the end of our podcast, are you guys hiring? That's a, that's a simple, very simple question. What What is the makeup of the... Mondelez Kendo team look like? Yeah, so I think uh, the team is pretty good, pretty dynamic. Mm. Uh, we uh, we are very, and as a culture, Mondelez is very open, mm-hmm. inclusive. Mm. We believe in diversity, Meaningful, inclusivity. Mindful. <laughs> More importantly, open to, I mean, we, we also work in a very autonomous way. Mm-hmm. So it's not like that because I am the, I'm, I'm leading the function, my thought is the, or my viewpoint is the last viewpoint. You can put your viewpoint and if it's a fantastic idea, take it ahead, move on. We are ready to take punts and risks. What we are looking at, diversity of not only gender, we are looking at diversity of thought. Mm. So we want, I mean, yes, we are hiring, we are open, people want to connect to us. I mean, through this medium, I would want to invite people, they can reach out to me for a coffee. Mm. We can definitely have a chat mm. because we are hungry for ideas. Mm. We are hungry for talent. We are hungry for anything which is interesting. I think the team as far as you ask me i think uh, they have taken a good care of me i would say mm. rather than me you know right now contributing to them mm. and i'm very thankful because i come from a different country mm. different part i never felt you know as an alien mm-hmm. so yes we have a fantastic chemistry going on in the team and uh, that's evident in the work that we are doing well you heard it from samir himself if you'd like to get a call with him we'll drop his linkedin in the comments samir yadav the marketing director of Mondelez, Kindo, Vietnam. Anything else you would like to share to our audience that's listening in and, and tuning in today? Sorry. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good conversation, as I said, that, mm. you know, happy to listen. I mean, happy to reach out to anyone who wants to catch up and chat up. But yeah, I mean, I would say we have great brands mm-hmm. and we invest in great brands and we invest in people. Mm-hmm. So yes, uh, if you have a great idea, if you have a great thought, and if you have a can-do attitude, you know, we are, we are happy to have you with us. And if you want to learn more about Sinks and Henry's, Samir <laughs> and myself are always available always for that. <laughs> uh, Samir, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome to Vietnam again. Uh, big, big welcome to you and, and best of luck to Mondelez Kindo Vietnam and, and all the projects and things you guys are working on. I love the project, meaning, uh, mindfulness, meaningfulness, great initiatives. Uh, can't wait to hear to, to see how that rolls out over the coming years. Thank you to those listening and tuning in. <laughs> thank you. See thank you, you so much, Ao. Thank you uh, for this for this interaction. And yeah, thanks to the audiences for hopefully listening to us. <laughs> Excellent. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Viglacera Corporation is the largest real estate and building materials group in Vietnam, as well as the largest industrial park operator in Vietnam. 48 years of excellence makes Viglacera a leading full-service provider of sustainable and high-quality building materials. Having a total of 40 subsidiaries, Viglacera covers the entire real estate and building materials spectrum.